Hi there. If you want to do solar dyeing, but you want to use materials that are close to home that you can get at the grocery store, very accessible, I'm going to show you how to do the solar dyeing with beets, some berries, avocado pits and skins, and red onion and yellow onion skins. I will be doing the process on wool yarn and wool fiber. This is a merino wool fiber roving. The first step you'll need to do is to scour your yarn and your roving. And I have a video here going over the process of scouring. This you'll do with some Synthropol, which is a great product to use on wool fibers. You will add the Synthropol to a pot of water, allow it to sit on heat with the fiber in it and raise the heat to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And once it hits that point, Point, you will hold it at that point for 30 minutes, stirring occasionally to wash any dirt, grease, or residual oils from the fibers. And then you will strain the fibers out of that scouring bath and place them in an alum bath. And I'm using an alum and cream of tartar mordant to mordant this fiber. You take the weight of the fiber when it's dry and you're going to do 10% of that weight of the alum and 7% from the cream of tartar. I'll put notes in the description below on how to go about doing that calculation. You'll bring the alum bath to 180 degrees Fahrenheit and hold it there for 45 minutes, stirring occasionally, uh, making sure that all the fibers um, are be able to move freely in the water with the alum so that the alum can adhere to the surface, surface of the fiber. A mordant helps the fiber to be able to absorb the pigments from the dyes that you're using so that they stay adhered to the fiber when you wash them or when they're in direct sunlight, it helps the, the pigment to last longer. So using an alum mordant and the cream of tartar in combination will help it to last longer, especially using dyes like beets and berries that tend to start to fade over time. Red onions and yellow onion skins also fade. Avocado less so, but all of these are more of a fugitive dye, which means they begin to disappear over time or fade over time. I have the tools and materials in the description below. I'm gonna jump right in, so check there for everything that you will need to do this process. Grab a mason jar and one of your mordanted, scoured skeins of yarn, and we're going to put this into the mason jar as we sprinkle in some of the materials that we're using. And I'm going to do a jar per material. So I'm gonna start with the beets and pour some beet pieces into this jar as I place the fiber into the jar. So I'm just kind of layering it in there on the fibers. And then um, top it off with the rest of the pieces. and then pour water over top until the fiber is covered. And I have hot water here that I'm going to pour over top. Be sure not to change the temperature of the fiber too drastically or you will end up with felted yarn or felted wool fiber depending on what kind of fibers you're using. I squeezed out all the excess water from these bundles of yarn before placing them in here so that it, the hot water wouldn't shock the yarn too much when I pour it in over the vegetable and the yarn. So now top off your jar with a lid and set this aside until we're done with the others. Grab another one and another skein of yarn. And I'm going to do avocado for this guy. And this one, I'm going to do a piece of roving and some yarn at the same time. So I'll start by sprinkling in some of these dried avocado pits and skins so that they're at the bottom and then place in some of the fiber and then add another layer. and alternating back and forth between the two. And then stuff the rest of the fiber in there. This one's pretty tight, so I'm gonna wipe off the excess pieces and sprinkle them in there. And then top this one off with water. You'll want all the air bubbles to come out through the fiber. So give it a few minutes to let the water settle into the jar before making sure you have it completely topped off. Like so, and then put a cap on this one. Give it a shake to make sure you got all the air bubbles out and then check inside. 
That looks good. Okay, so set this aside and then we'll do, I'll grab the berries and we'll do a skin of yarn with berries. Spoon some berries. And these are berries I have froze from the frozen food section at the grocery store. So they're mixed blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. And I do prefer to eat my berries. I want to experiment with what kind of pigment I can get with the berries. Um, but berries have a tendency to be one of the most fugitive dyes you can work with, meaning that they fade or wash out rather quickly, or the, the color washes from the fiber. So it's not one of my favorite dyes to work with, but it's fun to experiment to see what you can produce. And doing the solar dyeing process will be cool to see how the berries bleed into the fiber. Okay, and finally, we have the red and yellow onion skins. So I have my last skein of yarn here. I'm going to alternate between red and yellow onion skins because they each produce a slightly different color here. The yellow tends to end up being a little more um, golden and the red is a little bit more um, terracotta or brownish. So I'm going to put quite a few of the skins in here because you need quite a lot to produce pigment. Okay, and then I'm going to top this off with the rest of the onion skins and allow the dye to seep from the top down to the bottom of the yarn. And you can collect onion skins at the grocery store by pulling them out of the box um, and just tell the cashier at the counter that you're using them from dyeing. I've done that before. Or you can take them off of the onions that you purchase and store them in the freezer or somewhere dry. Uh, sometimes I put them in a brown paper bag and just set them in a cupboard. You want to make sure that they are free airflow around them or freeze them because they can begin to mold or disintegrate. If they're in somewhere that's too moist or they're in a plastic bag that's sealed, they start to sweat and can begin to mold. Okay, here are our four kitchen related solar dye jars. The red and yellow onion skins, the beets, the avocado pits and skins, and the berry mix. Now you'll put these in a window or on a porch somewhere that will receive direct sunlight and the sun will heat the water, allowing the dye to extract and as and cause the reaction of the dye adhering to the fiber. So allow them to sit somewhere in sun for a couple of days up to a couple of weeks and you can check on it every once in a while. Give it a shake if you want the dye to be more evenly distributed over the fiber. The goal is for the dye to start to seep into the water in the jar so that it becomes murky and the color of whatever pigment you're going for uh, from that material. So I'm guessing from past experiences that the red and yellow onion skins will create kind of a golden color yarn. The beets will go either purple or kind of a um, mauve brownish color. Avocado pits and skins typically do a peach to kind of a light um, tan color depending on the pigment that is in your avocado pits and skins and how vibrant they are. And then berries typically do a purpley pink color, sometimes more on the brown side, depending on how many berries you use and how much the fiber actually absorbs. So we'll see how these turn out in a couple days to a couple weeks. And um, I'll show you that as soon as they're done. Here are my solar dyed jars. These have been sitting outside in the sun for four weeks. And you can see the color has extracted from the objects inside the jars. So we have the beets and the avocado skins, which looks pretty light. The color doesn't look like it extracted too much, which is probably the avocado pits that we used just didn't have a lot of pigment in them. And then the berries and the onion skin, which looks pretty dark, rather yellowy. 
So now we're going to rinse these out in the sink, remove all of the remaining dye stuff, the scraps, and allow that fiber to dry, and then I'll show you the finished results. The colors that the dye stuff produced for these kitchen produce dyed yarns are really cool. I'm really surprised by how the beets turned out because of the alamordant. I think it was able to absorb lots of color and the slow dye process uh, worked really well so that this didn't turn into a brown, which is what I've typically gotten with um, dyeing with beets. And then the berries, the green or the yellow and red onion skins turned kind of a mossy green, so a little bit um, chartreuse. And then the avocado pits and skins, I think because they were dried and a little bit older, they didn't have quite as much pigment in them, but I ended up with a fun peach color and a really light cream color on the wool. Solar dyeing is a great process to do if you want to do some sort of natural dyeing that doesn't involve a lot of water because you're doing it in a jar and it will set in the same water mixture for the entirety of the dyeing process. You don't have to worry about using lots of water on the stove as you would with stovetop dyeing. And then the rinsing process is fairly simple as well because the yarn sits so long and absorbs most of the pigment, so there's not a lot to wash out or rinse out. Especially with these items, the pigment was pretty well absorbed by the fibers. With fibers other than wool, I would guess that the dyes won't be as vibrant. Typically wool as a protein fiber absorbs a lot more pigment and so is more bold in its color than a cellulose fiber like cotton or linen or other plant fiber would be. So if you experiment with that kind of fiber, um, just know that your colors will probably be a little bit lighter. If you want to see more natural dyeing videos, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Thanks for solar dyeing with me.